I'm here with Dr. Michael Nichols. He is a friend, a blogger, an author, a leadership guru, a coach. We'll add a few more things onto there. But he is here in Atlanta and from Texas, but now in Atlanta. And he is a leadership expert. And one of the things he talks about is simple leadership. Simple leadership, which many people wonder, is that possible? Simple leadership. Yeah, we, uh, from really with coaching with leaders and, and even from our own experience, as we were working with leaders and uh, both within organizations, uh, even with uh, entrepreneurial um, leaders, stay-at-home parents, we would work with them and we were hearing some of the same things over and over again. Uh, I'm, I'm stressed or I'm overwhelmed or I'm frustrated. And we begin looking at uh, both evaluating with them, helping them do self-evaluation, and then even do an evaluation ourselves, and we began to see that a lot of the complexity that we experience or the chaos or the frustration that we experience is self-generated. Every decision that we make does one of two things. It either creates more simplicity or creates more complexity. And so, I mean, as simple as, you know, a child throws a temp temper tantrum in, in the grocery store aisle, and we decide, okay, how am I gonna respond to this? And the way that we respond in that moment either creates more simplicity or more complexity for us the next time it happens. And those that have children can understand that. And so we found that um, what we, um, if we can help people make a few fundamental decisions, then it simplifies thousands of other decisions for them in the future. So you have these five steps. And the first step is purpose. Yeah. How do you help people start with purpose? How do they even know what their purpose is? Yeah, so as we looked at it, in fact, we use a uh, paradigm or, or a model, if you will, of a building. And the um, foundation is, for, is purpose. Um, we, we started, uh, a, we built a building on our campus in Dallas uh, last year. And from the very beginning, right before we started construction, we realized that the foundation was designed wrong. And so we went to the consultant, we asked him to fix it, and they were like, we're not gonna do that, we like the design the way that it is. And so we went and found another consultant, and we asked them to change the design because the foundation is so important. And when the foundation is off, then everything else above it's gonna be off. And so the foundation is critically important for us. For us, the tool that we use in purpose is, is a personal plan tool. And um, we call it the simple personal plan, uh, the tool that we use because we help people work through uh, the, the personal plan tool and, and from that they are able to figure out how their work fits in their overall life. It really is a foundation for everything that we do. If we want to find more margin, if we want to be more fulfilled, then we need to think through, okay, first of all, how does my work fit into my overall life? So that I'm but not you're starting with a personal purpose, mm -hmm. not an organizational purpose. Correct. And then you're working mm -hmm. from there. The second step is path. Tell us mm -hmm. about that path. Path um, has to do with vision, and again, the tool, the, these first three phases, as we call them, the five phases of simple leadership. Path, the tool that we use is simple vision, and so we have a simple um, process that we walk people through. Simple in that it, it's not difficult, anybody can do it, but it does take time, and we need to invest the time and energy into it uh, and give it the value, that we, the worth that we want, uh, both for our life and for our work. And so the question that we ask, um, in, in phase one with, with purpose is, how does my work fit into my overall life? Or what's most important to me? In, in, in path, the question that we ask is, where do I wanna go? And we can think about it in terms of personally, in a, in a career, what, what do I wanna do for a career? Or we can think about it in terms of our team. Where do I wanna take my team? Where do we wanna go together? What do we wanna build? What do we wanna become? What do we wanna belong to? And, or as an organization, uh, whether it's a small business, or a large um, corporation with hundreds of thousands of employees. Where do we want to go as uh, an organization? Big questions. Mm -hmm. These are not these yeah. are not the simple uh, yeah. simple leadership. But yeah, yet, yeah. Yet you have a simple model, and, and you yeah. know I think they're they're profound. The third is plan, yep. and you're looking for specific outcomes. Yeah, so, so how do you work that in? And and again, if we think about the foundation, based on that foundation, if we know how we want our work to fit into overall life. So we're not killing ourselves or, or running over our family or running over our team or, or ruining the organization. If we know how that fits and we know uh, phase two, 
where we want to go, then phase three becomes a lot simpler. I don't know if you can hmm. see that. It, it becomes easier to make decisions. It simplifies our decision making. Because you have the whole orientation down. Exactly. And so in phase three, what we're asking is, okay, now that I know where I'm headed, what do I need to do every day or every week or every month in order to get there? What do I want to, what do I need to do? And there's specific actions that are so specific, we can plug them right into our calendar as a salesperson, as a department manager, as a CEO. We, we can plug them right into our calendar. These are the things that I need to do in order to move the vision forward for me, for my team, for my organization. So the fourth step is prepare. Yeah. And in prepare, it seems like a lot of people get stuck. Yeah. And they're, they're preparing, they're preparing. How do you know when it's time to stop preparing and start doing, start executing? How do you yeah. work so, that through? Yeah, so great question. And in fact, 80, 85% of the people that come to us for help. In fact, 80% of the people that go to anybody for help. You're looking for a coach or a mentor or you want to go to a boss or, or, or even a parent. And you look for help, um, especially when it's work-related. There's four reasons why people look for help. They either... Um, want to lead better through change, they want to develop better leadership skills, they want to increase revenue uh, or income, uh, and they want to, or they want to be more efficient, more effective. Those four reasons. And, and all of those things are tied to our day-to-day -day work. And, and there's often real challenges with that. I'm having trouble with an employee, or I'm having challenges, um, make, I'm stuck making a decision. And so this is phase four is where kind of all of life and work happens. It's, it's where the decision making and the priority management happens. And what we want to do is we come, you know, I might come to you and I say, hey, Skip, help me with these things. You say, sure, man, I, I want to serve you. I want to help you. I want to support you. And, and so you, you help me with this and I go away feeling great about it. And two weeks later, I come back and knock on your office door. Hey, Skip, I got another problem. Can you help? And you're like, sure, I love helping people. And so we, we end up in this vicious cycle where if we, if we can help people to back up and work through phase one, two, and three, they can actually, those steps and the tools that we work through actually make you know, 80, 90, 95% of those decisions for themselves, mm -hmm. rather than them having to come back over and over, over again and get us to help us. So what we wanna do is help people to simplify decision-making both for themselves, but also for their mentors, their coaches, or their bosses. So yeah. having that clarity and intentionality up front helps, helps go through Absolutely. that process. Absolutely, yeah. What about the fifth one is people? And I'm always interested in, in people. And, and how do you, you know, you're talking about both personally and professionally, you, you seem to inherit a lot of people, whether it's at work or in your family. Right. How do you get intentional about that fifth? Yeah, so what's interesting about that is the original model didn't have a phase five. <laughs> And uh, in fact, when you when you look at our model, if, if you go to the website, the yeah, it's down the side, and so hey, they just tagged that on the side. There's actually a, a method to the madness, if you will. We we actually looked at some research that was done in one segment of the of the marketplace, where um, the research firm asked uh, executives in this segment of the marketplace um, about their close friends. How many close friends do you have? And over 70% of the leaders said they had zero close friends. I mean, not I, I can count them on two hands. Mean, evil yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Something like that. There's a reason. They're jerks. Yeah. Um, not, not, Is that a different uh, class? Remedial uh, class? Yeah. You're the jerk. Yeah, and I'm not one of those. <laughs> um, but, I mean, it wasn't that they, you know, I can count them on two hands or that it's, you know, less than five. It was at zero. Wow. And what that means is that we don't have people who care deeply about us who are speaking into our day-to-day -day life and work. We just don't have people that know us well enough in order to do that. We have really shallow relationships with people. And what we realized is that, that we need all along the way in phase one, somebody helping us think through, I mean, even at our age, somebody helping us think through how our work should fit into our overall life. So who's helping us think through that? Who's helping us think about um, where we want to go, either, we either with our career. your purpose yeah. and all, yeah. Because and who's helping us think through plan? Okay, if this is where we're headed, you know, who's on our team? Who's part of our organization? That's helping us think through all those things and speaking into that on a regular basis. That's great. Mm -hmm. How about yeah. leaders? So you, you, you coach leaders, you've seen leaders, you write about leadership, you teach simple leadership, and uh, you have this model. What is it that people, you know, we're in the middle of a presidential election, you don't have to mention that, please. But <laughs> what is it? What, what are people craving for? What are they looking for in a leader? You know, um, 
I think more and more what we're, what we're learning and what we're seeing even in the marketplace at all levels of organizations is that people are looking for authenticity and f f even when we mess up. Th they don't mind that we mess up as much as they want us to own it. And so for us to be able to, in fact, that, that may be the number one attribute that, that followers, if you will, or that team members are looking for in a leader, is that when, when, when we make mistakes, and we will, and we do, that we say, my bad, I messed up, and it was me all along. And what they say is, yeah, we know. Thank not you, thank you. Yeah, thank you for admitting it. Yeah. And now let's, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> let's not do it again. And, and here's what happens when, that, when, when they do that. Respect goes up for the leader. Influence goes up for the leader. And we're able to move forward effectively as a team and as an organization. Mm -hmm. Those bad examples stick with us more than the good ones. But for when sure. you do have a good one, it, it certainly does yeah. stick out. Yep. Well, thank you for sharing your simple model of, yeah. of uh, leadership. And it's good to finally talk to you because yeah. I've been following you and your, your blog for several years and uh, it's it's great to get to talk about all things leadership well likewise. authenticity yeah that's a good one thank likewise you. thank you